In this video, I want to go over a few of the types of problems that you should expect to see on the Khan Academy review for this unit, um, and just remind you on how you should be answering these questions. So the first one that we're going to look at is the zero product property exercises. So when it asks you to find zeros, right, finding zeros of a function, that's just another name for finding the values that make this zero or solutions or x-intercepts. So if you see the word zeros, solutions, uh, x-intercepts, uh, roots, those all mean the same thing. So if we're using the zero product property, that means that either, um, so this means to equal zero, so that means that this is either zero or three x plus one is zero. So you just set up your two equations and then solve. So add three, we get that x is three. So we're gonna subtract one here we have three x equals negative one, divide by three to get x equals negative one third. So it's saying the smaller value of x, so this negative value is smaller, and then the larger value would go here. So you would put it in something like that. Um, in these, it's asking us to solve for x. It's already in the factored form, and it's already equal to zero. So we know we need to use the zero product property by just setting each piece equal to zero because if the product is equal to zero, then that means that one or both of our pieces are equal to zero. So then you just go through and solve those. Um, so I'm gonna add six here, and then we have negative three x equals six, divide by negative three, and we get that x is negative two. So again, the smaller solution is this negative one here, and then the larger solution is four. All right, so that's what you should expect for some of the zero product property problems. When it's asking you to solve quadratics by factoring, basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to take this and turn it into something where we can then use the zero product property like we did in those last examples. So I have to go through and factor this. Um, in this one, my leading coefficient is one, so that tells me I can use the shortcut. So I'm looking for a number that multiplies to be negative six and adds to be positive five. So this back sign being negative tells me one negative, one positive. So what are factors of negative six that add to five? Well, factors of negative six are one and six, uh, two and three, and it's a negative six. Since this number is positive, that tells me the bigger numbers are positive, so these would be negative. Um, negative two plus three is one, negative six plus one, sorry, six, negative one plus six is five. So it's gonna be like this. So from this, we can jump straight into our groups so x minus one and x plus six. We know that those two factors are equal to zero because of this here, and so we would then go through and set up our equations and then solve. So we get that x equals one and we get that x equals negative six. Now the smaller x here is actually this one, right? I know this number has a larger absolute value, but it's asking about the actual value. So negative six is smaller than one. So you need to make sure you're paying attention to that. Um, and this, it's asking us to solve for x. It only says that there's one solution. So let's see what's happening in that situation. So we're looking for two numbers that multiply to be 25 uh, and add to 10. Again, leading coefficients one, so we can jump straight into the answer. We're gonna get two positives because both signs are positive. So numbers that multiply 25 and add to 10, that's gonna be five and five. So we're gonna have x plus five times x plus five equals zero. Uh, so we know that each of these factors has to equal zero for the zero product property to be used. So we get that x equals negative five and x equals negative five. Now, because these are the same solution, we only really have to write it once. We call this a double root. It happens twice, so it's a double root. Okay, so that's what you should expect from the quadratics by factoring intro problems. Um, for these, where it says solve these quadratics by taking square roots, we're trying to solve for x. Remember, in order to solve using square roots, we have to isolate the x squared. So we need to do everything that we can to get this by itself. The first thing that we should always do is move any constant that's by itself to the other side. So I'm gonna subtract one from this. So we have 6x squared equals 486. Now you're gonna divide by six. So what is 486 
divided by 6. So x squared equals um, 6 goes into 48 how many times? Uh, 8. 6 times 8. Is that right? And then 6 goes into 1, one or 6 goes into itself once. So we get x squared equals 81. So now we're going to take the square root of both sides. But remember we have to do plus or minus. So we are given that x equals plus or minus 9. So the smaller one would be negative 9. The larger one would be positive 9. Okay, so do the same thing here. Um, when it's asking us again to find the zeros, that means that h of x is 0, and then solve. So we have negative 7x squared plus 112 equals 0. So subtract 112. So we have 7x squared, sorry, negative 7x squared equals negative 112. Uh, divide by negative 7. And we get that x squared equals, what's 112 divided by 7? So 7 goes into 11 once, and then 42 16 times, or 6 times, so it's going to be 16. Since these are both negative, that means that it becomes a positive. Take the square root, so it's going to be plus or minus the square root of 16, which is 4. So we get that x equals plus or minus 4, so negative 4 and 4. All right. Um, so this one, it says, uh, the Khan Academy square intro, it says, what is the missing constant term of the perfect square that starts with x squared minus 14x? And then basically it's asking us to figure out like, what would I have to add here to make this a perfect square trinomial? So if you remember the process for completing the square, to figure out what was added to both sides, we took the value of b divided by 2 and squared it. So we're going to go negative 14 divided by 2 and square that. So that's negative 7 squared, which is 49. So this would be 49. And we do the same thing here, right? We're basically just being asked the same thing. What would I have to add to this to make it a perfect square trinomial? So it's 18 divided by 2, that quantity squared. So 9 squared is 81. So we'd have 81 there. Okay. All right. And then these last ones, it's asking us to uh, solve these quadratics by taking square roots. Now this looks, uh, this is called vertex form of a quadratic, but it's kind of the form that we'd use, uh, the step that we'd use when completing the square. So this one is um, kind of a nice way to practice that. So this one asked me to find the zeros. So that means that f of x is equal to zero. So we are going to add 49 to both sides to solve this. So we will have the quantity x minus 2 squared equals 49. So this kind of looks like the process that we'd use if we were going through the whole process of completing the square. So then at this point, remember, you would take the square root of both sides, plus or minus square root. And then you have now x minus 2 equals plus or minus 7. Because remember, when you take the square root of something squared, you just get what's being squared as a result. Uh, so from this, we're given that x minus 2 equals 7, or x minus 2 equals negative 7. So you can add 2, and you get that x is 9. And you can add 2 here and get that x is negative 5. So the smaller value of x is negative 5, and then the larger value of x is 9 here. OK. So we do the same thing here. This one's asking us to solve for x, so let's add 5. So when we do that, we get x plus 6. That quantity squared is equal to 5. So to get the quantity inside the parentheses out, we're going to take the square root of both sides, plus or minus. Now 5 is not a perfect square. So we're going to get x plus 6 equals plus or minus the square root of 5. Um, so this is where this comes in, right? It tells us to round to two decimal places. So it's asking you to round your answer to, do, to two decimal places. So what you need to do is first subtract 6. Now remember, we can't put these together, so it's going to give us something like this. x equals negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 5. So from this, I'm getting two different solutions. x equals negative 6 plus the square root of 5, or x equals negative 6 minus the square root of 5. 
Now in Khan Academy, it won't let us write this whole thing as the answer. So we're gonna have to plug this into a calculator and then round to two decimal places. So if we do that, negative six plus the square root of five, uh, our calculator will spit out something like this, negative 3.7639 dot dot dot. And it's asking us to round to two decimal places. So we're gonna round to this decimal place. Now remember, we have to take a look at the term after it, if this value here, if the three, or if the, the third decimal place is a five or larger, we round up. If it was less than a five, we round down. So because it's less than five, we round down. So we can write this answer as this, uh, actually we don't know which one it is yet. So let's do this, um, the next one, negative six minus the square root of five. This is gonna be negative eight point uh, two, three, six, zero, six, and so on. So again, we look at this number here. Since this one is bigger than five, uh, we round up. So we're gonna get negative 8.24, and then this one will be negative 3.76. So the smaller number is gonna be this one, negative 8.24, because it's smaller it has a larger absolute value, but it's more negative, and then negative 3.76. So those would be your answers for those. So hopefully this helps. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out, and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Good luck.